I must say I was thrown a little awry by your speech. It brings tears to my eyes, so I have to get back to the business again. <laughs> what a wonderful speech. Waiter, let me look at the menu here for a minute. Um, not sure what I want. Ah, Coral Thormeyer. Yeah, roast Thormeyer, very rare. I think that's right. <laughs> Could you get that for me, please? Thank you, waiter. Did you know that Carl is a collector? Now, a lot of us collect baseball cards or theater programs, but Carl collects Toastmasters memorabilia. He has every detail of every meeting that was ever held in the Monterey Peninsula and Hawaii. <laughs> in his garage. There's no car in his garage. It's piled high with boxes of memorabilia. Upon hearing Carl rave on about how wonderful Toastmasters is and was, one of his friends finally got tired and said, isn't there anything else you can talk about, like maybe the weather? <laughs> so, whoops! I do talk about the weather. In fact, he talks about the weather so much that he has a gig on KSBW television as the weatherman. His email address, some of you have, may have noticed, is T-H-O-R-M-Y, or Thormy. And whenever I see this, I find myself singing, Thormy weather. <laughs> it's hard to get away from Carl. He's just everywhere, that man. And each week at this club, he and his pet lunch pail, <laughs> named Thor. Thor, come to our meeting together. They're inseparable. Why did he name his pet pail Thor, I wonder? Because Thor is the god of lightning and thunder. That's why. And it may explain his email address. Thor me is like little Thor. <laughs> <laughs> Carl is also known for his pet peeves. One is lectern etiquette. Who passes in front of whom when we come to in front of the lectern? He actually gives a talk on this at least once a year. <laughs> And don't ever talk about turning the meeting over. <laughs> because he reminds us that we're not turning upside down. We're simply returning control to the Toastmaster by the Toastmaster. And this is a lecture. <laughs> it is not a podium. A podium is something you stand on. <laughs> topping his pet peeves list. <laughs> topping his pet peeves list is the dreaded I would like to. <laughs> As in, now I would like to introduce to you our next speaker. And you see him cringing over here, <laughs> muttering under his breath, just say it. <laughs> what he wants us to say, our next speaker is. Just last week, our beloved president sprung a pet peeve on Carl. She was brilliant. At the end of the meeting, she managed for the first time in recent memory not to say, I would like to. So Carl didn't have to mutter under his breath, just say it. Instead, she referred to this not once, but twice. As a podium! Oh, and so poor Carl was cringing! Ah, he's a podium! So I was watching Carl suffer through all of this agony. I realized that what we had here was a whack-a-mole moment. A whack-a-mole phenomenon. Because what we all are, are as, as student Toastmasters, we're, we have all these defects, and they pop up over here, and then they pop up over here, and poor Carl is trying to keep them down. So on behalf of Club 2032, <laughs> Mr. Thormeyer, I hereby present to you your personal whack-a-mole pal. <laughs> Carl Thormeyer, god of thunder and lightning, may you use it wisely and well. Now my fellow Toastmasters, beware 
anytime you step on a pet peeve, expect to get whacked by a car. <laughs> you will certainly go awry if you do. <laughs> the ring of the awe bell has nothing in comparison to getting whacked by a car. <laughs> Waiter, thank you for the lovely entree. Delicious, very rare. I would now like to turn the podium <laughs> over to you, Madam Toastmaster. <laughs> Opportunity to call on the Thor Master for a rebuttal or comment for one to two minutes. Oh, shall I stay here? No, I'll you, stay. you okay. come right up here. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. This will save me some time in the general evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> This wasn't really a surprise. Fred sent me an email earlier in the week saying, you're going to be there, Fred, I'm going to roast you. And I knew I was in trouble right off the bat. And no, Fred, I'm not going to give you any more information than you already have. <laughs> but that wasn't good enough. Fred came in, and he came over to me, put his hand on my shoulder, and said, can you put your lunchbox up on the table, please? And I'm thinking, I'm getting set up here. <laughs> and his roast, he asked the victim to set up his own demise. <laughs> And as you saw, I we made it happen. With regard to the email, it's actually T H O R M E Y, and that was a government thing years ago when we started with the first seven letters of your last name before they had the Carl Dot Dormeyer thing. <laughs> and so I just carried it over to my personal account, which is a Yahoo account, so I'm surprised you didn't refer to me as a Yahoo. So thank you for that. <laughs> and the I got to I need to comment on last week and Moyada with the podium. Moyada sat down and and Arnie had, Arnie is my fellow cringer on things like this. And apparently he was cringing, and Moyada writes this long note to me, something, why did Arnie cringe and so forth? Because did I, was it because I did something or something else and had nothing to do with it? I'm thinking about it. And I said, oh, I think it was because you said podium twice. <laughs> oh, God, if she understood. And then, uh, then I, of course, the finish that Fred did up here with Natasha was absolutely classic. <laughs> this is a very pleasant roast. I've had worse than this. <laughs> Good job, and thank you for the opportunity. 